We're up here in a locality of New South Wales called Stonehenge. We're on our way to Glen Innes. We're going to visit the gin distillery at Glen Innes. We're going to head back down to Glencoe today. We're going to visit the Red Lion Tavern for lunch. Sit back and relax as we take in this beautiful part of the world. In this episode, we are in the high country of New England, in northern New South Wales. The highest peaks on this range are above 1,400 metres, which is higher than the highest peak in all of the UK, and it enjoys four distinct seasons with snow in winter every few years. While this has been called Australia's Celtic country, we would like to pay respects to the Ngumbul, Gumbangi and Anawan peoples who have lived on these lands and whose borders meet in the highest peaks. This is their country, always has been, always will be. Glengarry Distillery is on the outskirts of Glen Innes on the Gurubal country. The owners David and Susie were really welcoming. David took us over to feed his cattle, including this impressive bull named Platinum. So here we are at the Glen and, uh, Glengowry Distillery. I'm here with Joe. I've met uh, a few other family members just earlier. So Joe, this is a fantastic setup here. Beautiful bar, this is just fantastic. But we're here to, to learn about gin. So tell us all about the gin that you do here. What makes it so unique? Okay, um, so gin can be made out of all sorts of things, but it must start with a neutral spirit. So to put it in really simple terms, neutral spirit is like vodka. Vodka is a neutral spirit. But once you pop juniper in it, it becomes gin. So juniper is what turns vodka or a neutral spirit into gin. The difference with our gins compared to about 95% of gins produced in Australia is that we ferment our own spirit base from scratch. Now the spirit base um, is normally bought in in a 1,000 litre IBC to most distilleries. So you've got that ethanol spirit base ready to go and it's a grain base. Our gins are potato based um, and our blueberry gin is actually blueberry based. So in a nutshell, we ferment potatoes or blueberries and we make a potato wine. That's the best way to describe it. And then that potato wine over time breaks down and makes beautiful alcohol and then we separate the solids from the liquid and then that liquid goes into our beautiful big still cecil at the back of the distillery here and then we distill a potato spirit and so um, the spirit is what forms the base of all of our clear gins or our dry gins we make our gins in the London Dry style here and London Dry doesn't mean it comes from London but it is a phrase that was 
coined and termed over in the UK. And what that means is that all your gins must be made from natural botanicals and have nothing else added to them that's artificial. So no sugars or flavours or colourings. And all those botanicals must go into that gin at once. So whether it's in a gin basket, whether it's um, actually being popped in the still and distilled that way, whether it's macerated after, like we do, we macerate our, our botanicals in glass. So it just means that everything goes in at once and that's either dried or fresh botanicals that go into our gins. So we met David earlier and David's now gonna tell us a bit more about the vats and, and some of that process, but Joe mentioned Cecil and I wanted to find out who or what Cecil was. So um, David, fill us in on Cecil. Cecil, okay, Cecil was my grandfather. So um, the idea with stills is that you are, this, as every still is named. And so whether it's named um, for somebody who is important in your area, or might be named after your mother or, or whatever. But Cecil was my grandfather, and so he was a uh, World War One uh, vet. He also did very significant things in our local area. He was responsible, for example, for planting a lot of the trees out at the Burns Golf Club. And a lot of the trees, are the English style trees that you see between us here in Glen and say Gyra were were planted by either him or his brother or his father. Wow. Uh, yeah, so that amazing troop of poplars that you see just 35 kilometres out of town where the world yep. the road goes. Yeah, that was my great uncle. We got some footage of that earlier on yeah. the way home. Yes. Yeah, so we're very proud of what we've got here. Wow. And so naming Cecil, naming still Cecil was sort of a, a logical yeah. thing as far as we That Every single bubble of comes out of there is a bubble of carbon dioxide and that's great because that means that there are two more bubbles of alcohol in there which is fantastic oh, okay. but uh, we are in a tin shed and the black leaves things they're um they're tank heaters oh, all right. to maintain the temperature and oh, it's also cool. insulated too yeah yep. so we've got to have a, a temperature of around about 24 26 degrees which is the optimum for a for, uh, for meeting yeah. uh, spent so what you see there is is, is spuds that have been all shredded up and, and cooked and, um, and the whole process to produce tether wine. So that'd be full to the bottom? Uh, well, it, it's got about that amount of um, a potato on it. Yep. When it finishes fermenting, we'll have around about, uh, you know those plastic 20 litre buckets? About oh, one, yeah. one and a half of those full of stuff that actually hasn't been able to be uh, either fermented. So they're, they're um, non-fermentable carbohydrates oh, yeah. that, yep. that are present in spuds. The rest of it, uh, it'll have about that much in the bottom of yeast, dead yeast cells, oh, and the rest yeah. of it is going to be a weak uh, alcohol wine, around about 9% alcohol. Hmm. Okay. So that then goes into Cecil. Yep. Uh, Cecil is a fairly, um, uh, it's a fairly interesting piece of equipment. It's actually, uh, all computer controlled, yeah, um, and it's got temperature probes and monitors and things all over the place. It's for gas fired still, so essentially what we do is we turn the yellow handle, press the green button, and away she goes. Right. Um, <laughs> but um, it's got an agitator on it which mixes the oh, yeah. Yep. It's got an, a, um, uh, a a zone in here which is full of vegetable oil, which maintains the heat and a good even heat distribution. And away she goes, and so this has deflagmenator plates in it. It's a reflux still with deflagmenator plates, these little eye holes thing. So the alcohol vapour comes up here, yep. travels through some, um, past some valves, condenses, then drops down and produces uh, increasingly stronger and stronger alcohol as it goes up through the heart. Oh, all right. And eventually comes out? Eventually comes out through that little tube. Wow. Got various condensers, we all run it on. Um, recirculated uh, water to, to cool it. Yeah, so that's Cecil. This produces our bulk spirit. Yep. So out of one of these, we'll produce between 20 and 40 litres, depending on how, it's, how this is all run, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, spirit at around about 80 to 90% alcohol. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's not for, don't get too excited, because it's not very much. <laughs> <laughs> but again, for us, that's huge. Yeah. Um, uh, because we're small scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it takes a lot of work to do that. Mm. And so once we've got that bulk spirit, we then will take that over and uh, we'll macerate it with our botanicals and yeah. then run it through other stills to produce the gin spirits that, yeah. that generally get bottled. Yeah. 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 
All right, would you like to have a taste, guys? Yeah, yeah, why not? I'm going to buy a bottle too, I don't know which one yet. And our tasting selection is our Highlands Gin. This is the gin that Dad first made in 2007. It's, so it's our original London Dry Gin. And it's just proven to be a bit of a winner for the last 16 years, so why not keep it on? It is a potato spirit-based gin. And in here we have juniper, coriander, ginger, Valencia orange, bay leaf and clove. Oh, wow. So what that potato spirit does, essentially what it does, is it takes away that really harsh alcohol burn. So when you taste our gins, yes they should be warm, and this one is at 43%, so it's a, it's a good whack of alcohol, but it should be nice and smooth and round on the palate and not burn the throat like a lot of grain based um, spirits do across the board, like vodkas and stuff, we all know that if you have a little sip of that it's quite hot and yep. shocking. Um, so have a little sip of this one. So we like to sip it neat first and then I'll dilute it with a bit of Long Ray's uh, tonic water, which is another another topic, is tonic water. Yep. We're really fussy about our tonic oh, water. Right. Thanks David, Sue and Joe for your time. We look forward to enjoying our bottle of the Bush Ranger Gin. The Red Lion Tavern is on the New England Highway at Glencoe, roughly halfway between Gyra and Glen Innes. This old inn is being restored under the new management and it has a classic Gaelic Celtic menu with a range of Celtic beers, wines and spirits. However, they plan to soon include local products like the gin from the Glengarry distillery. The tavern is open Wednesday to Sunday for lunch between 11.30am and 2pm and for dinner between 5.30pm and 10pm. If you plan to visit on the weekend, we highly recommend you book ahead as they have been booked out since reopening under new management, which says a lot for the service and quality of their beautiful home cooked meals. While waiting for our meal, we had a good wander around, checking out the beautiful decor of this tavern, which sits in the hills of the high country of New England. We don't know where we're spending our time next, but we hope to spend more time in Glen Innes soon, and we look forward to spending those minutes with mates.